and the experience of every devotee who is actually sincere. It doesn't matter whether you're in a sangha, in a devotional community, or even if you're more or less isolated in this world. If you are sincerely engaged in devotional service, the Lord will protect you because the Lord's in your heart. The Lord's in every atom. Huh? He's present everywhere. He knows everything and he's all powerful. So the Supreme Lord is perfectly capable of protecting his devotees and giving them the resources that they need to do their service. So then, Lord Nishingadev, after blessing his devotee Prahlad with pure devotional service, and then Prahlad offered so many nice prayers. Really, you should read them. Uh, I don't have them here because I don't want to I don't want this to turn into a two and a half hour talk. <laughs> but Prahlad's prayers, given in the seventh chapter, I think, uh, sorry, seventh canto, I think it's chapter 10 or 12. Uh, Prahlad's prayers to Lord Nishingadev are extremely instructive. Among them is the famous verse Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmanivedam the nine methods of devotional service and so many others. And for this, Prahlad Maharaj is considered one of the 12 Mahajans, one of the 12 great authorities on devotional service in this universe. And uh, of course, all of Prahlad's teachings are there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So you should all read this. Read this story, read the original story uh, we have uh, published this in our book, Sri Nishringa Sahasranam, A Thousand Holy Names of Lord Nishringa. And you should read this story. It's, it's not a, uh, a summary study. It's not an excerpt. It's the complete story, the original translations from Srimad Bhagavatam. The only thing that's missing is Srila Prabhupada's purports. So if you want to read the whole thing, I, w I would strongly advise that you go back to the original Srimad Bhagavatam and read the whole thing along with Prabhupada's purports. It might take an hour or two, but hey, what's, what, what is a better thing to do on the appearance celebration of Lord Nishingha Day? So Lord, Lord Nishingha is my Ishtadevata. He's my uh, chosen object of devotional service. And... Uh, but not in his ugra form, not in his angry form, huh? but in his uh, original form before he comes, before he appears in this material world uh, as a baby lion cub. And so I'm not going to go into that because it's a little too esoteric. <laughs> but he revealed this form to me and uh, wants me to serve him. So what can I say? <laughs> I have to do it. And actually, this is my preference. So, do we have any questions? Swati, is the appearance day of Lord Shinta the same as the day he came out of the pillar and killed Yarn and Kashi? Is the appearance day of Lord Nishinga Dave, the same day that he came out of the pillar and killed Hiranyakashipu? Yes. That's why it's on the uh, 14th day. It's not precisely on the full moon. Uh, if it was Purnima, Purnima is actually uh, the first day of the moon's cycle, the dark cycle, the dark fortnight. <coughs> but uh, Chaturdasi is the 14th day just before. That means there's a gap between the sunset and the moonrise. See? So Lord Nishingadev appeared in that gap. Try to understand. He's neither this nor that. He's neither in the light of the sun or in the light of the moon. He's neither a man nor an animal. He's neither a demigod nor a demon. He's, he's nothing. He's not, he's not in any material category. <laughs> he is what he is, as it's said in the Bible. Huh? The name of God is I am what I am. 
Huh? Like Popeye. I am what I am. Huh? There's no category. There's no uh, material quality that describes him. His qualities are all transcendental. So being transcendental means they're neither this nor that. Uh, they're not in any material category or any material uh, ontology. Another question? Uh, so when did he appear in his club form? He doesn't appear in the material world in that form. He appears only in the spiritual world, in Vrindavan. There's a very esoteric shloka in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that describes how Krishna is uh, enjoying playing in Vrindavan like a little lion cub. Uh, so actually he assumes that form. Why not? <laughs> is there anything cuter than a little lion cub? I mean, who can resist? <laughs> There is a difference. We've talked about this a little bit on the forum. There's a level of devotional service which is, uh, you can call it pure devotional service, but what it really is is it's not offensive devotional service. All one's offenses are cleared away. And then one has to practice on that level for some time. And when the Lord is pleased, then he appears to us and blesses us personally. And this is the perfection. This is the goal. At that time, one attains pure, pure devotional service. <laughs> I don't know. What, uh, what would be a way uh, to describe it? In the beginning, you know, there's three stages. In the beginning, our devotional service is offensive. That's called the neophyte stage or kanishta arakari. Kanishta means is full of faults. Huh? Ka nishta, full with faults. Okay, then madhyam adhikari. In the middle stage, we have purified our devotional service from the different offenses. Huh? And um, we're performing the process of devotional service purely but we still haven't gotten the result. So we have to perform devotional service without offenses for some time. How much time is going to be the next question? Well, it's up to Krishna. When, when Krishna is pleased, then he'll appear. Uh, but generally, my experience is that if one chants the holy name without offenses, that Krishna becomes pleased very quickly, within a matter of weeks or months. Uh, and he bestows his mercy on the sincere devotee very easily. Uh, but there is a long period of cultivation up to that point. The purification of all the anarthas. One of these days we'll do a series on the anarthas. What are the different uh, undesirable qualities, that's what anartha means, that we have to get rid of by cultivation of purity, pure devotional service. So sometimes these three stages are called the offensive stage, the clearing stage, and the perfect stage. Um, the devotional service in the clearing stage is actually pure because it doesn't have any offenses. That's a real devotee. Huh? The devotees in the Kanishta Arakari in the offensive stage are still going to be very unsteady. They haven't attained yet Anartha Nivriti. Anartha Nivriti means all the uh, various imperfections, impurities, Anarthas are gone away. Anartha. Anartha. Artha means wealth. In terms of devotional service, wealth means good qualities. 
So if someone has anartha, means not good qualities or the opposite of wealth, huh? like debts. Debts are the opposite of wealth. If you have debts, then even if you get some money, it goes immediately to pay the debt. You can't use it to enjoy. So if we have anartas, or bad qualities, material qualities, that means we have to work to overcome those. When we reach anartha nivritti, huh? nivritti means they go away, they disappear. Then we enter the Madhyama Adhikari stage. And we very quickly develop steadiness, detachment, attachment to devotional service, taste, purity, transcendental emotions, ecstasy, and finally, pure 